recent years, Mexico has seen a sharp spike in violence, and it is estimated that over 60,000 people have lost their lives to the drug war within a six-year period. In April 2011, the father of one of these victims, renowned poet and writer Javier Cecilia, decided to take a stand against the violence and denounced not only the drug cartels, but also the Mexican government's role in perpetuating the violence. He helped launch the Movement for Peace with Justice and Dignity, mobilizing thousands in the streets and touring the country, centering the stories of affected families whose loved ones were disappeared or murdered. Members of this movement have now taken their criticism north of the border to denounce U.S. government complicity in the violence, both by consuming narcotics and also by exporting weapons and a model of militarization. Standing in front of New York City City Hall, Maria Gonzalez Vela of Puebla, Mexico, holds a banner with a picture of her disappeared son, who was a U.S. citizen and cross-border truck driver. No tengo miedo. Miedo sí tengo. El más miedo que tengo yo es morirme sin volver a ver a mi hijo. Pero por lo demás no me voy a detener. No me voy a detener para buscarlo. Así me pase los días de mi vida buscándolo. Porque quien pierde a un hijo se le va la vida. Porque se puede... Si yo supiera que mi hijo está muerto, tengo una tumba para llorarle, para dejarle flores. Pero así no tengo un lugar. No sé en dónde está, qué le hicieron, por qué lo agarraron. No, no tengo miedo. No le tengo miedo. There's a common misconception that those killed in the drug war are directly involved with drug trafficking. Among the tens of thousands of people murdered are not only everyday citizens, but also many human rights activists and indigenous community leaders defending their land from mining, illegal logging, and neoliberal mega projects. Saúl Roque Morales of the People's Indigenous Council in Morelos, Mexico, participate in the caravan, recounting the stories of two community members who were defending their land and were assassinated. También nos han asesinado a hermanos, compañeros de comunidades indígenas. Entonces también son asesinatos. Nosotros reconocemos y sentimos el dolor de las familias, porque cada una de las familias pues, que han perdido son seres humanos y nosotros somos seres humanos también y que nos unimos a ese dolor, pero también tenemos nuestro dolor con los compañeros que están defendiendo los recursos naturales y también es un asesinato a los recursos naturales, es un ecocidio. Roberto Lovato, a writer and co-founder of Presente.org, participated in the caravan since it started in Tijuana and compared the stories of people in El Salvador killed and disappeared by the government during the 80s to those of the Mexicans on the caravan. You know, the drug war, it's clear the drug war is primarily about isolating and controlling populations that would otherwise probably overturn and fundamentally alter the direction of governments mm -hmm. in the hemisphere. Uh, the drug war in Latin America is replacing the Cold War in Latin America as a system of military, for militarizing communities in order to uh, keep them in, in, under the wing of, of free trade agreements. You know, the, if you're going to, you know, run these trade deals that are exploitative, destructive of, mm -hmm. of culture and of human life, you need to back it up militarily. And that's uh, what President Obama and President Calderon are doing, basically, is Mm -hmm. pushing these trade deals that are catastrophic failures and backing them up with military policies that are catastrophic failures. Mm -hmm. Caravan participants learned about the devastating toll that drugs have taken on largely low-income communities of color in the U.S. and the mass incarceration that is coupled with it. Bobby Tolbert is a community activist with Vocal in New York, one of the partnering organizations in New York City who work with formerly incarcerated folks and people living with HIV and AIDS. So we've been advocating for a long time for uh, drug users to be considered a medical issue rather than a criminal issue. However, there are powers that be that wish to incarcerate marginalized communities in, uh, in an effort to feed into the prison industrial complex, which feeds a right-wing agenda, the economic agenda, that marginalizes our communities. The national organization, the Drug Policy Alliance, helped organize the caravan's tour, making direct connections to their policy recommendations to legalize marijuana and start a debate about legalizing other drugs. Evan Goldstein is their New York policy coordinator. Well, the Drug Policy Alliance um, helped support this caravan because of the violence in Mexico that's associated with prohibition. Uh, fully 30% of the profits that 
cartels make is from marijuana, say, marijuana trafficking to the United States. So by advocating tax and regulating and legalization in, in the United States, we can begin to make a dent in the profits of the cartels uh, in Mexico and thereby reduce their power. Stephen Colette, a congressional candidate with law enforcement against prohibition, believes the U.S. drug policies are utterly flawed. Our drug policies empower gangs, terrorists, and drug cartels with monopoly profits and the money that, that goes in there results in the corruption, the money laundering, the violence and trying to enforce contracts that happens always with prohibition. In addition to criticizing the U.S. government's drug policies, caravan participants also united with immigrant groups to denounce the criminalization of the borders and human migration while freely letting weapons to flow through. Migrants, especially those from southern Mexico and Central America, have become increasingly subject to extortion and kidnappings by narco traffickers. Leda Ordaz, a Mexican immigrant in New York City, helped organize the caravan's visit with IM 132 New York City, a group working in solidarity with the pro democracy Mexican movement that grew in opposition to President elect Peña Nieto. Y aquí en Estados Unidos también, porque si, si, si también las drogas en México se dan mucho el tráfico, Estados Unidos está portando las armas, que son un 70% de las armas que se usan en el narcotráfico en México, vienen de Estados Unidos. Estados Unidos las, las manda para México y pues claro, los narcotraficantes las empiezan a comprar y a utilizar en contra de, las, de la gente. ¿no? Margarita Lopez Perez spoke against the death of her 19-year-old daughter and said she was appalled to see how weapons were sold like candies in the U.S. It's very difficult for us every day to narrate the story of our children. For us, it's to revive this plague. For us, it's to be suffering this wound every day. Pero si eso tenemos que hacer para, se, para que se concienticen y para visibilizar lo que está pasando en nuestro país, lo vamos a seguir haciendo. Vamos a traspasar todas las fronteras del mundo para que se den cuenta de lo que vivimos allá. The caravan concluded in Washington, D.C., where participants brought their stories and demands to end the drug war to national policymakers. Andrew Janal, Real News Network, New York City.